Hello everyone, I am Dr. Gaurav Kharia. I work as a clinical lead at Center for Bone Marrow Transplant and Cellular Therapy and also uh, as a senior consultant in pediatric hemato-oncology and immunology at Indraprastha Polo Hospital, New Delhi. Today we will be talking about beta thalassemia major. How is it inherited? What are the symptoms? What are the treatment options? And how a child affected with beta thalassemia major can live a healthy, normal life? What is beta thalassemia? Beta thalassemia is an inherited disorder of red cell series. It is the second commonest red cell disorder across the globe after sickle cell disease. Usually a child inherits the defective genes from both the parents and that is how a child is born with beta thalassemia major. Clinically, a child who is born with beta thalassemia major the usual life expectancy of a normal red blood cell is around 120 days. But in a child who is affected with beta thalassemia major, this life expectancy of the red cell reduces to around 3 to 4 weeks. And that is why these kids need blood transfusion at 3 to 4 weekly interval. What is the role of various blood cells in our body, especially the hemoglobin? Now as we all know, the blood has various cell components. It has red cells, it has white cells, and it has platelets. All these three cell lines broadly have some important role to play in our body. Platelets are responsible for coagulation. So whenever there is a cut, the platelets come into action to prevent the blood flow or blood loss from that particular cut. When we talk about the white cells, they have another important role to play, and they are the main primary defense against infections in our body. There are various subpopulations of white cells. Some are destined to work against bacterial infections, some against viral or fungal infections. Talking about the red blood cells or hemoglobin, again it has a very important role to play in our body. Red blood cells or hemoglobin acts as a fuel to our body and thus a baseline level of red blood cells or a baseline level of hemoglobin is very important for the normal functioning of the bodily organs. What are the symptoms of thalassemia major? The main symptom of thalassemia major is anemia. A child suffering from beta thalassemia major presents with anemia in first year of life, usually around six to seven months. And this is how a child with thalassemia major is diagnosed when he or she is evaluated further for anemia. The other associated symptoms on examination will be presence of liver, or spleen, so the liver or spleen can be enlarged apart from anemia. How is thalassemia major transmitted? Any child who is suffering from thalassemia major inherits this disease from both the parents. So both the parents are carriers for thalassemia uh, and subsequently if they transfer the defective gene in the child, the child is born with beta thalassemia major. What are the treatment options for beta thalassemia major? Any child who is affected with beta thalassemia major or suffering from beta thalassemia major can broadly be divided, his treatment options can broadly be divided into care versus cure. When we talk about the care for beta thalassemia major, uh, these patients usually need blood transfusion. So as we discussed earlier, hemoglobin or red blood cells are the fuel to the body. So we need to maintain a baseline hemoglobin for all the patients for normal bodily functions. So these kids affected with beta thalassemia major need to be on regular blood transfusion from time to time. The frequency of transfusion might vary. In the initial years of life when the baby is small, the transfusion frequency can be anywhere between three weeks, four weeks or six weeks. But as the child grows, the frequency of transfusion increases and also the requirement of the blood increases. So blood is the most important treatment for patients suffering from beta thalassemia major. Apart from this, these patients need to be on other supportive medications. They need to be on regular folic acid. When the transfusion exceeds a certain limit, usually around 10 to 15 transfusions, these patients need to be started on chelation. Now chelation is a treatment to remove excess iron from the body. Which each unit of blood, each ml of blood going into the body, there goes some excess amount of 
uh, iron. And to remove this iron from the body, we need medicines which are usually called as chelators or chelation medication. So after 10 to 15 transfusion or when the ferritin goes beyond, iron level goes beyond 500, these kids need to be started on chelation. This is again a very, very important part of management of thalassemia major. Apart from these two broad treatment options, blood transfusion and chelation, these kids need to be on medications from time to time so that their other body organs are not affected because of thalassemia major. When we talk about the cure for thalassemia major, awaiting gene therapy or genome editing, the only possible cure for thalassemia major at this point of time is by offering a bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant for thalassemia major has come a long, long way. Initially, the outcomes of uh, bone marrow transplant with thalassemia major were not that great, especially in elder patients or patients with class 2 or class 3 thalassemia. But over the years, with the advances which have happened, the outcomes of patients even suffering from class 2 or class 3 thalassemia have improved significantly. Now at any experience transplant center, if we have a child suffering from thalassemia major, uh, by either offering a actually identical bone marrow transplant from the family or from unrelated donor or even in recent times by offering a partially matched family donor transplant also called as a haploidentical transplant we can offer almost 90 percent cure to these kids suffering from thalassemia major any complication from medicines which these child receive so every child with thalassemia major who's on regular medication, especially the chelation medication, needs to be monitored from time to time for various complications. For example, we need to assess the liver functions, we need to assess the renal functions. There are some specific manifestations of each of these chelators, uh, some specific side effects such as uh, bone and joint pains or uh, suppression of the bone marrow. So these patients need to be monitored from time to time to look for all these complications of the ongoing medications. What are the lifestyle modifications for kids suffering from thalassemia major? Now these kids suffering from thalassemia major, they are as good as any other normal child. Apart from being on regular transfusion and chelation, they have no other problems. So these kids, I do consider them as normal kids and they should engage in all normal activities, all normal physical activities, exercises, just like any other normal child. So today we discussed about thalassemia major, how is it inherited, how is it manifested, what are the common symptoms, presenting symptoms with thalassemia major, what are the treatment options with respect to the care, with respect to the cure. And finally, what are the lifestyle modifications which are required in these patients suffering from thalassemia major? Stay safe, stay healthy and stay informed. In case you have any child suffering from thalassemia major in your circle, please take that child to a pediatric hemato-oncologist and a transplant physician so that this child can be offered proper care and also a cure in the form of bone marrow transplant in case there is a suitable donor available. Thank you.